All right, what's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning back in and watching another one of my videos on a do-it-yourselfer. Today, as you've probably already seen in the title of this video, uh, we're going to be using VACOM, and then I'll be showing you how to adjust your Xenon headlamps in an older vehicle. Um, newer vehicles have canvases built in, and literally, it's just like a click of a button. Unfortunately, with the older vehicles, you're going to have to do some manual labor, and you're going to have to use VCDS at the same time. Uh, it's fairly cut and dry and it's simple. It's not really that hard to use. Uh, so let's just say you've taken out your headlight, you unplugged it, you replaced the bulbs, you plugged it back in, now you get in your vehicle, you start it up, and you see this little image. Now, that little image is letting you know that you need to make those adjustments. You cannot just go in the front and disconnect your battery uh, for 10 minutes and then thinking it's going to go away. It's not going to go away. Um, if you just go into VCDS and you try to clear default code, it's not going to go away. All right, until you actually make these adjustments, that little light is not going to go away. So here in a second, I'm going to show you a still image from Ross Tech's website. Uh, I want to say it's like one page long. Uh, it gives you the whole procedure from start to finish on how to commence to this. Now, also taking the liberty uh, into making a live feed yesterday while I was making those adjustments in my car through VCDS step by step. And then also last but not least, I'm going to show you the, I want to say it was like two or three tools that I needed to make the minor adjustments. All right, so the only thing I will not be showing you today is how to make those adjustments manually. What I mean by that is there's certain steps you have to take before uh, you can go into VCDS and make those adjustments. Um, I'm going to be posting a link below uh, it's through AA1 Auto, I believe, and they go through the whole procedure and let you know how far your vehicle has to be away from the wall, where you need the place to tape at, um, and then so on and so forth. Um, now, if by any chance, though, you do have questions in regards to this video, uh, I don't care if it's the uh, software portion or the actual manual portion, please let me know. Leave me a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But yeah, with that being said, uh, let's get to it. All right, so these are the tools that I used. Uh, the first one is a Phillips screwdriver that was to uh, make the adjustments on the adjuster screws to either move them left, right, up, or down. And then a T30 Torx bit with a quarter inch ratchet uh, due to the fact that I had to take out two screws and push the headlight housing back just a tad bit um, to raise the actual beam of the light. Okay, so in this still image, as you can see, you see arrows all over the place with some circles. So the red ones, uh, that's to make your adjustments to the left and right. And then the screw with the blue circle around it, that's for up and down. Now, as I stated in the previous image or still image, I had to take the screw to the left and right and loosen them up from uh, where the blue circle's at around that one due to the fact that I had to push those tabs back a little bit further to raise the actual beam. Uh, this may not be necessary for you once you make those adjustments, but again, if your beam is sitting too low, uh, that's what you're gonna have to do. Okay, so I'll pull this image straight off of Ross Texas website. Uh, this is a one page on how to make your adjustments for your Xenon headlamps. So what you see right here in front of you in black and white is what I'm about to show you what I did uh, going through the actual VACOM or VCDS uh, step by step on how to make those adjustments. Alright, so once you get into the main screen of VCDS, you're going to go to Select Control Module and hit Select. It says Please Wait. Uh, after that, under the Common tab, you're going to stay in the same category. You're going to go to 55 where it says Headlight Range on the bottom left. Now it's communicating with the ECU. It's going to take a couple seconds to load everything. Once everything is loaded, the first thing that I did, I went to fault codes um, and clear whatever fault codes I had. Now, just to show you, though, this is what I was talking about earlier. It says headlights not adjusted. So I'm just going to show you, uh, just in case you didn't believe me, I'm going to hit clear codes. Then it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to erase these codes? Yes. Now, once you erase them, it says fault codes have been erased. And then here you go. It's back at it again. So it's not going to go away if you clear it. So now you're going to have to go done, go back, and then you're going to go into basic settings. 
once you go into basic settings, um, you're going to either type one or hit up, and then it's automatically going to do its adjustments now to a certain degree. So what's happening now is it's going to take about a good 20 seconds for your headlights to adjust. Now, once they are adjusting, you don't hear moving anymore. That is when you would actually turn the headlights on. Once the headlights are on, then you make your adjustments, your manual adjustments. Um, and then once they are done, uh, that's where you go into the next step. All right, so as you're probably able to see or tell here a second ago, I'll kind of forward, fast forward that actual clip up to 20 seconds. Um, but here we go. Um, so I made my adjustments, and that's when I went up to group two. And then, uh, as you can see, for the adjustment learning for status, uh, it's in regular position. Uh, voltage level and sensor rear, it learned it. And then the other two items do not apply to my vehicle. But as you can see right here, I uh, kind of just hovered over it and uh, everything is in specs and the way it should be. So that being said, once you're done, um, you go done and go back. Uh, that's pretty much just going to give it that final save for the ECU. Uh, then you're going to hit close controller, go back. go back and then exit and that would be it all right so there we go start to finish uh, almost start to finish because I didn't show you the manual portion on how to make those adjustments that's why I did you the favor and below I posted a link from a one auto it does a great job on showing you how to do those manual adjustments this video is more focused on the VACOM portion and how to go in there and talk to your actual ECU uh, to let it know that those adjustments have been made. Now, if you think this video was useful, if you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. Also, if you are a new um, YouTuber uh, or you are new to my channel, also hit that subscribe button and turn on those notification, that notification tab. Um, due to the fact that about every week or two weeks, I'm going to be posting a new video. Now, here in the near future, though, I'm not going to be so much focused on mechanical work. I think I'm going to turn it more into the uh, software mode, uh, meaning what I mean by that is I'm going to show you a couple pointers, a couple tips on some of the stuff that you can actually do with VADCOM. Now, for some of the older vehicles, you're very limited on certain things that you can and cannot do. Um, but for the newer vehicles, there's a lot of things that you can tweak within your car. Now, the only thing I will say, though, is, and I'm going to throw this out there right now, um, you have to be cautious on how you code some of these things, as well as what features you want to select and so on and so forth. Because if you mess up, if, again, if you mess up, uh, you can take the possibility of doing some serious damage to your ECU or your vehicle itself. All right. So, but again, um, that pretty much sums it up for today. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, until next time.